Rob, a, a weekend without a game, unfortunately, for you, with the Chesterfield game being postponed. Of course, you's, you had the lads in for training instead. So how was the, the weekend been for you? Because obviously, like Louis mentioned, it was a, a game that you were looking forward to, not only because it, it would have been your, your first one in the dugout, but as well, given the, the opposition that you were facing. Yeah, I thought it was, a, it was a brilliant game for us. And, you know, I thought I was really looking forward to it. I thought it was, uh, it was going to be a great game regardless. You know, two, two teams who play really good football. Um, sort of no pressure on us to go to top of the league um, and really attack it and, and sort of take this new chapter forward but it wasn't to be so we did a bit of training got the lads going and uh, yeah just all eyes on Rochdale as soon as we um, as soon as we knew the news so the lads have responded really well and uh, we just have to look forward to tomorrow night Yeah and you touch on Tomorrow night, obviously, Rochdale have, have been doing fairly well since coming down from, from League 2 themselves, aren't really too far off the, the playoff places. They had quite a, a high scoring game on, on Saturday when, when Oldham came to their place. So, obviously, tomorrow they'll be looking at it being back at home and, and wanting to get back to, to winning. But how are you kind of looking ahead to that from your point of view? Yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to the game. They play uh, very good football, got some very, very good players. Um, obviously, a massive club who probably were looking, back to, looking to bounce back themselves only not only from the weekend but uh, from last season as well and um, no, it's going to be a really good game um, really looking forward to the challenge again um, fantastic opportunity for the lads um, to go out there um, a big club good uh, good fan base good stadium and yeah uh, overall just looking forward to the first game and uh, enjoying watching the lads do what they do on the the interim manager front now of course, a, a different role for you going into this game, but do you sort of feel any different about the, the actual game itself and sort of the build-up and everything like that? How are you sort of feeling on that front? No, it's slightly different, obviously, being uh, being in charge and taking training and, and setting the team up, but ultimately, you know, I've been a part of the coaching team for the last year. The lads know how we play. We're not changing from our structure or anything like that, you know, so it's, uh, it's very much carry on, um, just making sure we nail down the finer details, making sure we're going through our shape, adapting to what we feel is going to be the most effective for each game for Rochdale tomorrow, uh, making sure we understand them, uh, their strengths, their weaknesses, because they're a very good team, you know, a very good manager, they play excellent football. Uh, really looking forward to the game, I think it'll be a really good advert for the National League um, and the progression of, of what has, seems to be the consistent pattern this year of teams coming playing, um, playing some good stuff and you know, adding to the excitement of games. I think the games in most leagues, most weeks have been very close and I expect it to be the same. But um, Ultimately, we've got to concentrate on us, um, just keep doing what we're doing, keep improving. And the two terms you probably hear a lot is just making sure we keep adapting, keep evolving to any situation. Um, but the big thing for me with the lads is that we bring that intensity that has sort of been our identity over the last few years. Um, and we make sure that we do that with a smile on our face and enjoy the game. Yeah, and obviously mentioning the interim manager side of things again. I mean, I asked this to, to Louis before what would have been the Chesterfield game on, on Friday, but how much has your workload increased as a result of that? Um, yeah, a little bit, quite a lot. Um, we're we're a staff member down and you appreciate how settled things were and also how much people did, uh, Mike, Ian, Chris. So, yeah, but you know, credit to Louis and Mags. They've really stepped up. Um, everyone at the club stepped up to help and sort of take the load and... Yeah, we're getting into a routine now. You know, um, probably helped with the role I was doing previously because I'm able to start implementing a new structure behind that makes us a bit more efficient, a um, bit more staff and support staff for the players. Because um, I'm more than happy with Louis and Mags in terms of their knowledge and their coaching and their experience. So, yeah, a um, little bit more work, but ultimately it's enjoyable and you know it's my responsibility ultimately to make sure that nothing changes and we just keep stepping forward. Um, we keep attacking it and make that message clear, you know, nothing's going to change in terms of our identity and how we play. We're just going to keep adapting and keep evolving it, as I've said before. And um, yeah, the, the lads, which this club has done consistently for a lot of people, but especially this group of players who've really taken it on again, is uh, to can keep that consistent platform um, and to make sure that that mentality of us as a club never changes. And on the, the availability front, obviously, we uh, mentioned on, on Friday with Louis that Tinks has obviously had his dislocated shoulder, so he's going to be out at the, the moment. But uh, a positive in that Callum Whelan's been training for the past sort of couple of weeks, really. Obviously, a, a bit of a, a one way he hasn't played since the start of the season, so it's obviously one way you're probably a little bit reluctant to kind of throw him straight back into things. But ultimately, as we say, a, a positive to have him back around the squad. Oh, 100%, you know. Um... Absolutely buzzing to have Wheelow back on the pitch, both for his footballing ability and what he brings to the group as well. 
Um, but he's a, he's a top pro and a top guy, and he understands that you know we can't rush him back. We need to sort of be respectful of his injury, how much time he's missed, that we haven't had an opportunity to get him minutes at the moment. Um, but also in the fact that um, he's a huge part of the squad, you know, and he's someone that can sort of give us a different dimension and add to it. So the challenge now, you know, we've got a fantastic squad of, of talented individuals. Um, tough thing for me is having to pick 11 to play and five for the bench and unfortunately have to leave two lads out. But like I said to the boys, it's, uh, it's their responsibility to make that as difficult for me as possible. Um, and like you said, it is a fresh start and you know, fresh eyes from myself, Louis and Mags. So um, I'm a huge believer in training properly uh, as well. And, and that's the big thing the lads have really adapted to training. So yep, yeah, going forward, good to have a good, strong squad. Obviously Tink's unfortunately, we'll, we'll see the extent of his injury in a couple of weeks once he's settled down I and mean, get the scans and whatnot. But other than that, yeah, going forward, pretty much a, pretty much a strong, uh, fully fit, as strong squad as we could possibly ask for.